Hello and welcome back to the channel. This week we are talking about a Lifetime movie and it's a movie all right. So these past couple weeks I've been talking about sort of this suburban mom hysteria that comes from movies like Cyberbully or The Pregnancy Pact and this week I was gonna talk about a, sis or a Weiss nightmare because one, it's a crazy story. Two, in looking it up to try to find it, I found out that it's based on a true story. But three, I also found out that um, I'd have to buy or rent it and I really don't wanna do that. Number one, because I'm broke. And number two, uh, that would make it just harder for me to get clips of it to put in this video. Needless to say, I went scrolling through Lifetime's YouTube channel because they do have a YouTube channel where they post a bunch of their movies and shows and things like that and I found an absolute gem and that is Dirty Teacher. So this movie is kind of like the title suggests there's a teacher in it and it's yeah so let's just get into it. So the movie opens with a teen girl getting put in a police car and everyone's sort of crying. It looks kind of crazy. It's in slow motion but uh we end up and we cut to a title sequence of Dirty Teacher over a bunch of students leaving a school. And might I add, I forgot how low effort Lifetime movies are because that title card was bad. Like it just, they did not care. Either way, we find out that we are now starting one month earlier, one month before the scene that we just saw. And in these opening scenes, we meet our main character, Jamie. We also meet her boyfriend, Danny. Now, the information that we need to know about them right off the bat is that Jamie's a good student and she needs good grades to get into a good college. Danny, on the other hand, is an athlete and he's just kinda doing stuff willy-nilly. We also learn that they have a pregnant teacher who's going on maternity leave and that is when our new teacher comes into play. The new teacher, Miss Matson, shows up in her car and she thinks she looks good. Very confident, very confident. The principal shows Miss Matson around the school and of course they end up near the baseball field and Danny of course plays baseball. So Miss Matson looks through the fence like any pervert would and just stares, stares right at him. And they look at each other, they like acknowledge each other, and then they leave. And of course we get this like music cue that like she's evil, she's bad kind of thing. But I was privy to this information when she looked through that fence. Like, you know when you're at a playground and you see all the kids running around, you're like, oh, those are their parents who are the adults. And you see that one guy looking through the fence that's like, it was that vibe because that's exactly what she was doing. Needless to say, we learn some more information about our main character, Jamie, in the next scene when she gets home. Her dad's unemployed, he's drunk, he's spending their money. Their mom is working full time. She's like really trying to like keep the family together. And Jamie is disappointed to find out that the college that she wants to get into might be a little harder to get into because they had to use part of her college fund to help with the mortgage or something. But Jamie decides that she's gonna run away to her boyfriend Danny's house for a little bit because she can't take all the tension happening in her house. So she goes over there, they're kissing, they're loving on each other, and Danny's like, you wanna do it? And she's like, not yet, I'm not ready. Which is perfectly fine, and he's like, it's okay, we'll get there. We also find out from Danny's house that number one, Danny's mom does not like Jamie and we also find out that Danny's dad was employing Jamie's dad and fired him. The next day we get to see Miss Matson getting prepared for her first class and she has a little bit of a moment in the mirror, i.e. a traumatic flashback to her past. Apparently the lady who raised her was not her mom but it was like somebody who was supposed to be her mom, you know what I mean? Like a stepmom or something like that. And um, she called her ugly. She called her a freak. And so now Miss Matson has some insecurities. And before I go any further, I have to mention that Miss Matson's outfit is inappropriate to say the least. As someone who has teachers for parents, 
and just spend a lot of their childhood in the like teaching school environment even after school um she would never be able to wear that no they would not let you wear that and yet this will not be the last time or the most offensive thing that she wears either way class gets started kids are rolling in and there's a kid with a beard in the back like this is a straight up adult man after the kids start coming into class they're making comments da 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 and she gets class started with talking about some of these quotes that i guess they wrote from like you know the past teacher or whatever and she decides to recite some sort of like love type quote and it's very clear that she's looking at danny and he's like you talking about me so obviously miss mattson has her sights set on danny and after class she pulls him aside to say hey i see that you uh, aren't doing that well and i know that you need good grades to stay in baseball so if you want some tutoring i'll be around and he accepts so after school they're tutoring and um things get weird again so quickly somehow she works into the conversation do you have a girlfriend and he's like yeah and she's like well imagine this scenario you have your girlfriend and you really love her but there's somebody else and you really vibe with them and like you know what kind of conflict do you think that is like you know in literature like girl i'm sorry but predators roast me out that's nasty don't do that and like of course danny is trying to like you know r maintain his cool like be you know a normal person who's sitting there thinking to himself she's not hitting on me i'm just misreading it you know and so he's like like he he's being like really genuine like hey other teachers don't give me a second chance but you 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 want to help me so thank you and he's really grateful and then she's like no problem and something that she does multiple times throughout this movie that i absolutely hate is when she goes oh she's like doing this all poor thing sort of sound and i i hate it it's disgusting thanks honestly you're the first teacher who's ever given me a second chance Aww. you're pretty cool Either way, after tutoring, she's like, let's do this again. Are you free this day? And he's like, sorry, I got an anniversary with my girlfriend. And she's like, oh, well, if you need extra tutoring, here's my number. I will say one thing, one thing, maybe two. It's inappropriate to give this kid your number, your personal cell phone number. That's inappropriate, like, pretty much objectively, but I won't say that I haven't had my teacher's numbers, but it was literally because I went to a tiny school in a tiny town where my parents worked. Like, my parents personally knew a lot of my teachers and hung out with them outside of school. Like, they were good friends with them. So it made sense that if they needed to check up on me and my parents were off on a trip, that they would be like, hey, you doing good? You know, like making sure I'm still alive over here. This is very clearly not some tiny school in some tiny town where you know your teachers personally. No, this is just straight up inappropriate. It's so gross. And after they exchange numbers, Miss Matson spends her free time looking at pictures of him. Like she has genuinely gone off the deep end. Like there were moments where you could make excuses like maybe she was just looking at him or they weren't really looking at each other in like a seductive kind of way. Like maybe that's just, the no. She is looking at pictures of him on the school website because he is in baseball. And she's just like, <laughs> like she really be sitting on her bed, twiddling her thumbs, kicking her feet like she's dating him like she is a 12 year old girl meanwhile jamie's having problems with her family her dad is drunk and he's angry and he shows up at danny's house and danny's dad comes out and he's like what are you doing here sir and um yeah the family's not on good terms right now but jamie ends up she goes over there and she's like dad we gotta go we gotta go okay like this is not it's not cute okay 
You don't need to be drunk in front of your ex-boss, even if he is a jerk and kind of a dickwad. But then we're back at school, and Jamie gets a C somehow, lowest grade she's had, and Danny, he did really well because Miss Teach helped him. And before I move on, fit check. Oh my gosh, no. Her skirts throughout the movie are just way too short. You would not be able to wear skirts that short. But after class, Jamie asks for extra help from Miss Madsen, and instead of tutoring her, she's like, why don't you just rewrite the paper tonight? And of course, Jamie's like, I mean, but I have plans. Her anniversary, which Miss Madsen knew about. But Miss Madsen is like, don't you want to go to college? So she does it, and she cancels her plans with Danny. And Danny is really disappointed. He's like, I can't believe it's just one C. And she's like, but I need to get into college. She pretty much says, I don't have the luxury of having money like you do right now. And for some reason, Danny takes this as like a personal attack and is like, uh, you're just, are you mad at me from my dad firing your dad? And as someone who's been in a relationship where their partner talks like this and takes everything personally, uh, maybe don't when it's literally not about you. It's about her getting into college. So Jamie walks away feeling kind of sad, and after the game, Miss Matson pulls up behind Danny and she's like, Hey, sorry you lost. What are you doing now? And he's like, I don't know. I might go to a party. And she's like, Well, if you don't have any plans, then why don't you come hang out with me? As if that's not, again, super weird. We cut really quick to Jamie and she's working on the paper, but she decides to call Danny real quick, but he doesn't pick up. He's too busy with Miss Matson. They decide to go to this like Chinese restaurant and of course she's like sitting there acting like all like cutesy and stuff and like, you know, not the way a mature adult would act, especially because why would you want to sit and have a dinner where you're conversing with a teenager for any other reason than you are their mentor? Like, actual mentor. And yet again, we have a weird conversation that should never come up between you and a teacher. She asks him if Jamie and him have done it. And of course he says no, and she's like, aww. Aww. <laughs> so after dinner, she's acting all cutesy and flirty with him, and she gives him her address in case he wants to stop by for extra help. They get in the car, again, she's like trying to like flirt with him a little bit, like she sort of, she finds an excuse to lean over him, to show her cleavage, and get kind of in his space, and I'm not gonna lie, I know this trick, I've done it a few times, but not with a teenage boy! And the grossest thing is they almost kiss. But he stops her and he's like, I should probably get going. On the other hand, Jamie was trying to figure out where Danny was. She called and she called her friend and was saying, is he at the party? Found out he wasn't. Then the next day at school, she's like, hey, you didn't pick up. And he says, oh, I was at the party. And now she knows for a fact this man is lying. But in an effort to feel a little bit closer to him, Jamie decides to go to a party that everyone else is going to. Like, they're going to yet another party somehow. But she goes and uh, things get a little, you know, hot and heavy between them. They're like kind of getting it on. And uh, she stops him again. She's like, no, I, I don't want to do this. No. And Danny instead gets frustrated this time. He says, screw it. And he leaves. And pretty much at the same time, Matson is texting Danny, being like, do you know things about cars? And um, he decides, yeah, I'll be over there. I'll come over. And she pretends to have something wrong with her car. And then she's like, oh, your hands are dirty. I better wash them. Ma'am, you are offering to clean his hands off? Also, fit check. She is wearing one of those like plaid shirts, you know, like those like sort of plaid blouse type things. And she has it like hiked up and tied. So it's showing her stomach. And then she's wearing like these pink, almost velour like track pants. Like, I don't know who decided on this outfit, but it's just God awful in every sense. Like the only person I can picture that making sense on is Megan Fox. Anyway, they get inside and she's cleaning his hands and they kiss. Yes, 
they kiss. And he pulls away and he's like, oh, but, and she's like, it's all right, you're 18, right? It does not matter if he is over the age of consent. There is a power imbalance. So pretty much she reassures him. She's like, it's okay, it's our little secret. And he's like, okay, so they do it. But later that evening, Jamie shows up to Danny's house drunk and she's like, you're, you're cheating on me, aren't you? You're cheating on me. And he's like, no, I'm not. His mom somehow hears this immediately and comes outside and she's like, miss, you better get out of here. Like, stay away from my son kind of thing. And I'm like, shut up, shut up. This girl is drunk, okay? She's clearly not okay. She, she, just shush. That's not the biggest issue right now. And Jamie gets upset. She starts crying. She's, she runs away to our car. Uh, Ma'am, you are drunk. You should not be driving, you know? She gets in her car and Danny does like the least... He puts the least amount of effort in trying to stop her. Like, he stands on the passenger side and he pretty much goes, No! Don't drive drunk! Don't do it! Still, Jamie gets home safely and she ends up still being suspicious about Danny the next day at school. Also, I noticed in the establishing shot that they're the Wildcats. Wildcats, get your head in the game. But again, after school, Danny is talking to Miss Madsen, they're talking in the classroom, and... Jamie decides to sort of look in and she sees sort of like a weird inappropriate closeness slash touch between them and she's definitely more suspicious of their relationship. And at this point we get some unnecessary flashbacks because this is when Jamie starts to put it together. We get some more scenes of Matson and Danny together and Jamie confronting him again being like, I think that Miss Matson is giving me bad grades on purpose. What do you know about this? And Danny's like, leave me alone. And you know trying to pretend like nothing is wrong for some reason. But at this point, Jamie's fed up, okay? She follows Danny because she's like, I need to know for sure. She follows him to Miss Madsen's house. And of course, when he gets there, he starts making out with her and stuff. And uh, Jamie goes around the house and sees them making out. And it's kind of like intense. Like she's like biting up all on him and stuff, ew. Anyway. But Jamie sees him, and then uh, Danny turns his head, and he sees her. So obviously, they're all, like, shocked and stuff, and Jamie runs, and Danny's like, I gotta go figure this out now, so, like, I'll see you later. And Miss Madsen's like, no, I'll go, not you. But Jamie gets home, and Danny gets out of the car, and, you know, he's trying to, he's like, hey, okay, I don't even know what's going on right now. Like, this all came about all of a sudden. Like, I swear to God, like, just please don't tell anyone because, like, my dad will disown me if he knows what's going on. And Jamie's like, I guess I'm gonna keep your secret for now kind of thing. Meanwhile, Miss Madsen is very nervous. She's very anxious. And she starts texting Danny, like, nonstop. She's like, what's going on? What did she say? What's, you know, she's trying to figure out. She's like, please talk to me. And, you know, if I were in her situation, they're trying to play this off as she's so crazy and obsessed. And I'm like, no, I think maybe she's just concerned because, like, her secret might be out. Like, I think that is something that she could actually be anxious about, like, so in order to sort of like soothe this anxiety, Miss Madsen gives Jamie an A in the class the next day. And Jamie's like, you're not gonna get away with this, okay? Which just sends Miss Madsen kind of over the edge. We also see that like Jamie and Danny kind of like make up a little bit and Danny's like, you know what? Like I still, I'm still in love with you and I'm gonna break up with her. I'm gonna do it tonight, okay? So. I'll do it tonight and then I'll come see you. So that's what he does. He meets up with Miss Matson and she's trying to be all kissy flirty with him. And he's like, stop it. No, stop. This is done. And Miss Matson goes off the deep end, especially when he calls her a freak, which is what her stepmom or whomever from her flashbacks also called her. So, um, yeah, she's super triggered. She hits him with her car. And she stops for like maybe two seconds to be like, what have I done? But then gets out of her car and she starts covering her tracks. So she moves Danny's body out of the way. She starts sort of cleaning some stuff up a little bit. And this is when she really starts covering her tracks. She goes to Jamie's house. She drops off a cell phone in her car. She puts blood on the front of her bumper. So it looks like she was the one who hit Danny 
She also drops off Danny's cell phone so the detectives will be thrown off. She also goes and buys a ticket for a movie so that she has an alibi. Miss Girl has definitely done this before. And the next day, Miss Matson takes her car in to get fixed because the front bumper was sort of bent and she pays a lot of money for the guy at the chop shop to fix it up with discretion. Although there's a lady in the back who very much wants to tell the truth. Like she's clearly the one there who's like, I'm gonna listen to everything and I'm about to out you. On the other hand, Danny's parents are worried. They they immediately call the police that like he is missing. And of course, because they have a lot of money, the detectives get right on it. And let me just say, one of the detectives is a guy who frequents Hallmark now, which is so funny. And I'm pretty sure that he's on a TV show where he's also a detective. So this guy's so weird to me. I can't take him seriously. Either way, the detectives find Danny's phone, so they're like hot on someone's trail. They know something has occurred. Meanwhile, Miss Matson is getting her car cleaned, and they... The vibes of this scene are so weird. It very much feels like the music that they use for specifically to make it sound like sort of godly or almost hymnal sort of thing. Um... Meanwhile, the detectives find Danny's body and they're like, okay, this is clearly a homicide. We gotta figure out who did this. So of course they start asking around and they bring in Jamie to the police station to question her about where she was and what she was doing. So while they're questioning Jamie, of course she mentions Miss Matson. She's like, Danny was gonna go break up with her. They had a relationship and everyone is like shocked by this information, you know? And they're like, but did you tell anyone else? Like, does anyone else know that he was in a relationship with her or that he was gonna meet her? And she's pretty much like, no. So they are suspicious of Jamie because now she's pointing fingers. And of course they go to ask Miss Manson. They're like, hey, where were you? Did you have a relationship? And of course she's playing holier than thou. She's like, of course I didn't. I have an alibi, the movie stub. And of course, fit check. She's wearing these like white full length pants and this weird pink blouse that's giving grandma. I'm like, okay, lady. But the detectives are still detecting, okay? They go to her school, they ask her friend and her friend's like, Danny was in a relationship with his teacher? Then they decide to search Jamie's home and they find the blood that was placed on her front bumper. And I have to say, why is that blood still like wet? Like there's no way that Matson put that blood on there, like enough blood on there for it to remain wet within like 24 hours. But because they find the blood, we are back to the opening scene. They decide to arrest Jamie. Meanwhile, they're reporting on the news that Jamie got arrested. Miss Madsen is trying to chill, but she's just being haunted by Danny's ghost. She's like, oh, I've done something awful. Which is weird that she felt guilt about killing him, but not guilt about, I don't know, being a straight up predator. Either way, I think Jamie makes bail, but she has to have an ankle monitor on so she can't really like leave her house. And this is when we have sort of the plot line that aligns with the other things I talked about this month, where the mom comes in at the end and she's like, I got this, okay? So the mom goes to the school, she investigates Matson, and she has, you know, a confrontation with her and Matson is like, I didn't do nothing, okay? Like, I'm sorry about your situation, but I didn't do anything, and leaves. So, of course, like, Jamie's mom is like, I'ma snoop a little bit. She finds her car keys to, like, Matson's car. She gets in the car, she's looking around, and she sees the GPS. The GPS that she used to look up the chop shop where she got her bumper fixed. So, of course, Jamie's mom goes to the chop shop and the guy there's like, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about, but you know what I, you know that thing I said earlier about that lady? Yeah, she tells her what's up, but she's like, but I can't say anything to police because I don't want to lose my job. Like, then why did you tell her that information? Because she finds out that they can't get the bumper back. You know, the evidence. So Jamie's mom is like relaying this information to, you know, her family and she's like, pretty much, short of a confession, we we can't do anything because all of the evidence has been, you know, lost at this point. And Jamie's like, we need a, we need a confession? All right. 
So Jamie decides to take things into her own hands. She's like, I'll go try to get a confession from Matson. And since it takes a while for my ankle monitor or like for the police to get there, they'll find my location and they'll find me and everything will be solved. So she goes over to Matson's house and she's like, pretty much like confess. Like she gives her some false information and Matson is like, why are you saying all of this to me? And she realizes that she's trying to get a confession. So sort of this like little tussle ensues. Essentially, in trying to provoke Matson, she's like calling her all these names, pretty much saying like, Danny never liked you, he never wanted you, he actually like, why would he want someone like you? You're so old and ugly. And of course, this is just further setting Miss Matson off. And in this like struggle, they end up sort of tussling with a knife and it ends up cutting Matson's face, which of course like is the biggest like, you know, now she's truly ugly cause she's gonna be scarred. But Matson sort of like chases after her and then the detective shows up and Matson tries to play innocent, but the detective knows what's up. He heard everything. However, we have to have one last little tussle and the detective like turns around like an idiot and tries to check on Jamie. So Matson like hits him and then runs out. But in trying to run away, Jamie gets the detective's gun and she holds it on Matson and she's like, you, you're, this is over, you're done. And Matson's like, you think you're gonna shoot me? And so, and so Jamie says, yeah. And she shoots into the sky just as the police arrive. And the detective comes out, he takes the gun from her and everything is gonna be hunky-dory. And of course, after all is said and done, Jamie gets into her dream college and everything is great. Her dad has a job, so like she's gonna get to go to college. And Miss Matson is watching the news in jail and they're talking to like students from the school about the situation. And one kid says, yeah, I would have had a relationship with my teacher if she was that hot. And of course, Matson gets like one last little, little something something. I honestly thought that I had seen this movie until I watched it and I realized I've in fact not seen this movie. Maybe I saw another movie that was similar to it, but I was not expecting any of those twists or turns because this movie is an hour and a half long and I swear to God the first 30 minutes are just what I talked about with their relationship. Like, they do not spend any time building this personal relationship between Matson and Danny. Like, it literally comes and goes so quickly that it's like, what are we doing with the last 45 minutes of this movie? And turns out we are trying to prove that Matson murdered this kid. As I mentioned multiple times, obviously in this scenario, like the very clear victim is Danny. Like Matson is very clearly a predator. I know there's sort of this idea or like not so much stigma or I guess, yeah, there's like the stigma around men or boys being victims, but he, he is. If your teacher tried to date you, if you had relations with your teacher or something of the sort where the power dynamic was not equal, you are more than likely a victim. <laughs> I just wanted to make that clear because like, it's one of those things where like this topic in particular just like sets me off. I don't know, that's just my personal opinion. I don't know if I could really like rate this movie to say if it's like good or bad. It's just, it's very entertaining. It is, but it's also very gross. So yeah, that's all I have for this movie. Um, it is free to watch on YouTube, on Lifetime's channel. So if you want to watch it, you can. But that's all I have for you. I will see you guys next week.